Well, greetings, everyone. Irish Trekkie, back with another Nerd Escape podcast. And with me, as always, we have the fantastic Chris, the Trek Collector. How the hell are you, buddy? Oh, absolutely brilliant. Delighted, excited. Uh, we could call it right. We did say New York. Um, that something could happen. We thought it might have been bigger towards DST, but yes, we did get hmm. a new trailer. A new trailer. You you lucky New York Comic Con attendees. But we got to see it pretty, pretty much the same time, just a little bit after. And um, we're going to dissect the hell out of it right now. Mm-hmm. So if you're familiar with our first uh, season two trailer breakdown, we're going to be doing pretty much the similar. But uh, join in in the conversation in the comments section below. If we miss Anthony because, you know, it's been known to happen. Uh, let us know uh, in the comments and we can talk about it in a future video as well. So, um, yeah, it's oh, the hype. The hype has begun. The hype has begun. So you'll probably see the trailer just playing down there a little bit. Uh, for us but without dissecting it straight away Chris um, what was your initial reaction to it yeah <laughs> well, there's, there's one part that really blows me away it's a ship <laughs> <laughs> it's a ship and I think everybody's favourite part is you know the Klingons have a new style of fashion which they did kind of cover before <laughs> you know what I mean hair's in <laughs> <laughs> um, and Poor old Mary, uh, you know, coming up with a solution that, you know, Klingons shave their hair and more and then the cannon brigade jump on it. Now, look, before anyone gets upset with me using... Before anyone gets upset with me saying cannon brigade, I am part of the cannon brigade, guys. (laughs) Honestly, I am. But I do think there is ways to kind of, you know, you don't have to throw it out there, you know what I mean? Look, come here. People can find decent explanations. I'm not too keen on the whole Klingons shave their hair for war, but at the same time is look at Star Trek The Undiscovered Country and look at Chang. And he was very much looking to cause war. So, be you know, or not maybe some Klingons do like to shave their hair. To shave or not to shave, man. that is the question. Exactly. And if you look at Carl as well, he kind of look at it and say, well, you know, they, they probably were building up for a huge. And just, it could be an old yeah. tradition that by the time Deep Space Nine comes around, the Klingons like their hair. Yeah. So, who That's knows? It, you know it. what I mean? There's no point, you know, come here, look, embrace. <laughs> if you know your Star Trek knowledge, it's absolutely fantastic, you know. But be nice about it. There's no need to. I never. Throw down I face. never predicted when the the first rumors of Discovery were coming out that there'd be so much talk about the follicles of alien species uh, as much as there has yeah. been. But listen, yeah, you, Chris is Chris isn't part of the Cannon Brigade, but uh, it's just a name. I am. Don't worry about it. You know, it's always good to kind of have a look. Part at of the it, Cannon Brigade. I am part of it. So don't like if anyone gets upset by me saying the Cannon Brigade. I. It's not meant to be upsetting. Just, you know, take it on board and just thinking that sometimes there is a nicer way. Just relax and enjoy the ride. your points. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Look, we knew at the start, right? Discovery had its issues before it got to episode one. And a lot changed. Mm. And we were told that this would actually start matching up to by the time we got to Kirk. And look, if the guys involved in Discovery are actually listening to the fans and addressing things quite quickly, I will say, straight off the bat. You know what I mean? They've brought Klingons in with hair. Mm-hmm. Let's not be getting upset and throwing the toys out of the pram. You know, give them a chance. Yeah. View your points. Make your point. Nicely. That's all I'm saying. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, things, things change and change is scary. But anyway... With that said, let's dive into the trailer. And with the power of editing, uh, yeah, let's go into it. So, here we go, folks. Uh, season 2, trailer number 2, analysis engaged. So, um, we get to see the discovery. Uh, so, a lot. just before we dive into this, um, we've watched it a couple of times ourselves, as probably you have as well. So, there are a lot of scenes shared with the first trailer. But uh, we just get like an, ex- it's like an, almost an extended cut trailer. And um, I think the word out there is that it's kind of showing content for maybe up to like the first seven episodes. So there will be disjointed timelines here and you'll see the uniforms changing as well. But um, we just kind of go through a frame by important frame, so to speak, anyway. So uh, here we have the discovery going into uh, this hellish asteroid field. And um, yeah, what do you think is going on here? Very, very interesting. I think this is our maybe crashed Federation ship that I'm looking for, but maybe I'm completely wrong because it's... Ooh, it's a hard one to call. Yeah, the mission for the uh, Hiawatha, I think, mm. 
is actually... Or it could have something Ooh. to do with those red spots. Hang on, there's the Hayawasha. I never noticed that before. Do you see Ooh, just, just well to the left? There. That, yeah, there we go. Yep. I never spotted that. Well, that solves that one. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Sorted. <laughs> right. So it was right at first, theory. Yeah, it is. Okay, so that's cool. I'm trying to recognize the class of ship there. Um, oh, there you go now. See, I, I just breezed over that frame, kind of looking at some of the other ones. So Hayawata. And um, only our engine... Well, we only know the engineer to have survived on this anyway. Um... Now, this oh, seems to be the discovery, the doesn't it? Sorry? This seems to be the discovery. It is. If you can actually see, you'll look at your um, panels and you can actually clearly see discovery on it. Cool. Okay, so stuff is going down. Now, oh, Pike. Do you know, since the first season, the first trailer of uh, season two, there's been such a buzz about Pike. And um, all the little tweets and Instagrams of Anson, like he's such an uber fan and seems to be loving it. Hugely. He's, well, it's great. One, he's he's an uber fan. And two, he's probably playing the best character that you could ever be asked to play in a Star Trek. Big time. Big time. I'm really, my fingers and toes are crossed for a Pike spinoff. So, oh, absolutely, um, yeah. listen, CBS, can, can, we make, can we make it happen as well? Mm. It's all great to have the Picard show going, but uh, come on. Pike has to be done. Um, great to see the bridge crew. Again, we talked about them in the last trailer analysis as well. So hope to see more of them uh, in season two, which I think is going to be a given. Now, um, here we have Burnham analyzing these seven red signals here. Um, I, lo I love the holographic stuff in Discovery. What do you mm. think about it? What do you think of the level of technology coming yeah, out of season it's one? It's cool. Look, uh, I know it's kind of like... It's not TOS. It's it. It's not TNG. It doesn't bother me. You know, it's 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 Star Trek for this day and age. Okay, yeah, they went back and they did Discovery, but Discovery's here. We've got a great season one so far, and looking at the trailer so far, season two can only get better. So I'm not going to get too upset by visual effects, hmm. but I will get upset when I'm not seeing my ships clearly. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know like it's gas here. with the Eagle Moss doing the discovery. Like it's a great thing that we have Eagle Moss now doing the Starship line because we're seeing a lot more detail that we completely missed through the show. So, and in fairness, they do seem to be putting that right because as we can see the Enterprise there, like you know, it, it seems a lot more crisper. We can see NCC one zero three one right at the back, which you know what I mean. I didn't notice that before, mm. so it just seems to be that they've gotten it. You know what I mean? We're, we're getting to see stuff a lot clearer. And, you know, the ships are a thing of beauty. So, you yeah. know what I mean? They should be. We should be able to make them out properly. You know what I mean? There's no point half seeing a ship. Um, mm. I think it's annoying. Yeah. And especially if you know Star Trek and Star Trek fans, we like to see our ships. We do. And we, we do, like do. to work out all our details and stuff like that. So um, it's nice. That's a nice view. You can see the, the, the shuttle bay and so forth like that. You know, you can actually kind of even really work out how, how large that shuttle bay is. It's, yeah. Like over over here. You're going to have the, uh, that's the kind of ramp up to the back door. Mm -hmm. Just here, so it's kind of showing you the scale of it. Um, exactly. Which is class. And yeah. I love those kind of sweeping shots, as you can see. It's like it's flipping over on a 45 degree angle, two mm -hmm. degree. And, you know, uh, I, season one seemed to be very saturated in space that it was very always heavily blue. Um, yeah. So it's nice to see the kind of tone shift over here, which I think aids in what you just said there uh, in the detail. Yeah, it does. That we can see for sure. Um, now, don't worry, folks. We let the trailer play through as well, Ooh, just for the audio side of things. Be, anyway, it's Amanda. So yeah, Amanda, Amanda Grayson. You can see a lot of. So we're in. Uh, so we're on the discovery. Uh, still, a lot of Vulcan text going on there, and as There's you can the see, the red angel in the in the screen where if you yeah. see it, yeah. So it's probably uh, Burnham's lab. Yeah. And this is the point she has, where she has been promoted. promoted. She is now a com commander. I yeah. would, I think she wouldn't be working under Stamos anymore. So yeah. I think this could kind of start making sense as well. That she is kind of uh, her specialty is in the sciences. So it would make sense that she would have her own lab and she doesn't have to be based in the spore room. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I'm not going to call the spore room engineering, and I would like to see kind of a warp core. Starboard. Yeah, there's two. The, yeah, there's two engineering rooms, the port and starboard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so she definitely seems to have her own lab here anyway. And this is where you hear, and again, we'll, we'll play this through for the audio side a little bit later on. 
um, we hear the reference to Spock having seen what he called a red angel um, early on in his uh, childhood. And uh, this is what was calling him. And we talked about the wings um, in some of the, the promotional art in the first trailer as well. So being referred to as a red angel here, very interesting. And uh, we know Michael has seen this as well. So that pretty, it's very interesting. I'm just looking at the detailing on that. Mm. I don't know where that image is get gathered from. Is that renders of what Spock has seen, you know, from his mind? The information that she's gathered on her own console, if you look, she's looking over towards it. So it's it's kind of interesting, like, if you see, it, is this walking out and the wings just disappear? Or is it part of this creature for the time being? Yeah. It's very It's very hard to make out. The red angel. Um, just yeah, and there was like a sense of ease. I think she, she was referring to. So mm. here's here's mm. Michael seeing this red angel. All right, we saw this in the first trailer, and um, it's Looks cool. Doom and gloom. I never connected it. Uh, maybe you had said it before, but uh, I never connected how similar these spacesuits are to the spacesuits from the original series. The kind of asymmetrical uh, design. Mm -hmm. If you look back at the ones Kirk and Spock wore. Um, obviously vastly different, but you can actually see oh, the vastly lineage. different, but yeah, they're they're they're, got, they're, they're, they're similar. Yeah, -ish. this 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 just this assembly anyway. Um, yeah, there's so homage there, so exactly. So this is Michael seeing the Red Angel from the first one, and she wasn't terribly scared. It was almost like at peace. Ooh. So very interesting. How are you doing? Exactly. So here we have our four pods from again the first trailer. As well, so we have uh, Pike, uh, Burnham. Um, I don't know actually who else is in there. I'd love to know what these things are. But let's, uh, we have to <laughs> stop here. We have to stop here, yeah. don't we? <laughs> now, fair play to you, David, because you kind of pointed, and we were kind of saying a hologram, and I think it's absolutely right. Where you're pointing your mouse cursor at the start, we can see your projection. And yeah. if we do look back towards the end of season one, and um, we go to where we have the Klingons all together. Mm. And we, you know, that is the same room. Look at the Klingons on the ledge. Yeah. So this is obviously the houses working together. And obviously this is going to be their new ship, the ship of the fleet, mm. the gorgeous, beautiful. Known D7. as the D7. Um, but again, as you can see here, and we were talking about this before coming on, um there is additional detailing here which kind of has a similarity with the uh, katinga don't say as well i'm gonna kill you i'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in there okay it's a holographic look come here it's just <laughs> lines ripples they're gonna start off build a basic it's gonna look like match race d7 and we're gonna be so in love with it now look who cares i, I think this is where where we were going initially the houses were split uh 24 they you know, even at the start with the war, you know, and this was a huge thing with the Klingons. They were completely fragmented. So they were never posed a threat. Mm. Um, then they all rallied together to wage war on the Federation. And then when the war went on and after what you call it, call was no more. They just mercilessly went around attacking everything and looking after themselves. But now we can actually see that they're actually, this is the 24 working together. Yeah. And, this is now the ship of the fleet. Yeah. And I can see then, you know, as we said, we've seen one of the houses take over a star base and they put their insignia on it. Yeah. I can think we can start s safely saying now that this is where the houses insignias won't become as prominent and we'll get the Klingon. The Empire. Emperor. Yeah, exactly. So the houses are working together, which yeah. again ties into coming of age at the TOS, but like D7, Matt Jeffries, just a simple design, beautiful ship. Um, I do see what you're saying there, but I'm just going to say that's holographic ripple effects. Ah, I I wouldn't be I would be I would be surprised if we see a lot of detail, you know, just for the the sake of it. Uh, from the yeah, I'm sure if John John's on, like John hasn't really done any of the Klingon ships, but if he is put to it, I'm sure. Yeah, you have um, he, Sam like Mitchell. Has to do it. Um, Matt no, Middleton was working on the Klingon yeah. side of things as well, as far as I remember, and they did a great job. I know. Listen. Well, they, they, they could call in John on this now because this is going back retro trick. So, and mm. that would be something that John would really, really love. But then again, does he want to really touch it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Someone else is looking after the Klingon. Yeah. He's, the fed, he's the fed guy. He's original fed design. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is this is the point <laughs> you know of I mean? the this is the point of the trailer where we get to see 
more Klingons. Now, um, mm. but before we do, uh, the next scene morphs into the surprise reveal of uh, Section 31 Georgiou, Mirror Universe. Mirror. So she has her holographic effect, just like we saw the original, um, I think it was at WonderCon, uh, we saw the yeah, bonus trailer. Come here, it's cool, isn't it? You join Section 31, you get a blackened delta, and you also get like a... Holographic you know, hood. Have a, yeah, a holographic projecting and you change your face. I tell you. And it's, it definitely looks like Klingon. Now, what I'm thinking here, do you remember when we started seeing, you know, teasers of season two and we saw plans for Laurel's garden mm-hmm. do you think this is Laurel's garden could be because here she is she's obviously yeah. Klingon uh, disguise and, yeah look uh, at the doors at the back yeah looks like an entrance to a chamber so and it does look Klingon for discovery so yeah I think you have got that perfect is she it meeting up with like Laurel? Laurel's garden mm. yeah and we we did see yeah you're right I, I would strongly agree have to agree with you there I think you've done some good it was just just when I had it on that scene there I was like that's leaves mm. and stuff there like you know be interesting yeah. be interesting to see what Georgia oh you you sneaky Divilio and look at that yeah she, she's up to development for sure and the handout Section 31. What a class. I love that badge. <laughs> Not the most secret organization yeah, yeah. when the, everyone has a badge. And they're yeah, but if you look at this shot there and look at the light on the floor, mm-hmm. that looks to me more that she's on a starship. Yeah. This like doesn't have to be the exact same um, So scene. this could be the part where she's introducing herself to Discovery Crew. Yeah. And exactly. uh, here's my pass. <laughs> mm. I'm part of Starfleet. Mm, exactly. Part of Starfleet exactly. Part of? I'm not telling you. I don't have to. Uh huh, for sure. Just check the badge. The badge says it all. Boom! That gets and me I don't everywhere. Even wear Access it. all yeah, areas. <laughs> Access all areas badge, but you can't wear it. Now here we are back with the away team. So uh, we had Pike's security officer, that um, alien, uh, that alien character that we saw in the lift, uh, Burnham, and and that little kind of, I don't know, drone, security drone with them as well. Um. So again, similar to season one, and uh, this see this is now. Do you know as you mentioned that as the hand was out with mm-hmm. the badge, this could be a That's scene what I think. connected here. That's what I think. And I think it. I, I, now I haven't seen the panel or read up in it, but I heard that it was alluded to because this this conversation between the two of them is very kind of friendly. Like, well, what's it like to be back in the saddle? And I think Pike doesn't know that this is mirror. No, nope. Georgia. So we're told to uh, zip it. Yeah. So I yeah. doubt. Pike knows. Yeah. So that's just going to put an interesting little twist on things. And look at the way Michael's looking at her. Yeah. As in, behave yourself. I know who you are. Yeah. And even Pike is looking and, at Michael and, and kind of going, the, it's a bit look weird. Look at the dirty grin. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a fun one. <laughs> so just a grand yeah, shot Michael's of the discovery and baby, then so. Saru's eyes wide open. So he's little ganglia are probably tingling right now for some reason. That's what I'm just thinking. Yeah, we can't see it. They've, they've learned, don't let the ganglia loose. If you see the ganglia, we know something bad happening. Exactly. So again, this is the whole disjointed nature of the trailer. So Pike is back in the um, so Enterprise obviously, uniform. So obviously too many beams over to Discovery to assume command. Exactly. And now we're back to the away mission. Seems like an exciting time. Back to our escape pods. And you They're spotted that from last. You spotted from the last season that the, these come out of the rear of the discovery, mm-hmm. so that's going to be cool. Now, here we have Stamets and or Space Ensign. Spider. Oh no, the engineer. Oh, ba, 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 or something Reno. I can't remember. I can't remember Tig's character's name. The yeah, engineer from the Hiawatha. Is that a space spider over there, or it's just goop? Goop. They're definitely cutting into something yeah. like. Yeah, something's, sticky. something's coming out there as well. And it's even like undulating there as well. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, I think I know what that is. Do you? Oh, I think I, I, think I know. Yeah, I think yeah, I know yeah, yeah. what you think it is. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Wait for it. Now. It's a race. No, no it's a cling up. Right <laughs> now, actually, look at this scene over here. Does that look it's like the right. area that. Um, Rails Garden. Yeah, that's Rails Garden. That we think. And oh, for. Okay. Let's take a breath, people. Klingons have hair. Can we just take a moment in solidarity here? Oh, come here, it's <laughs> man. They can grow their hair quick, but I think I think there's gonna be. Is there gonna be a little bit of uh, 
time gone by? Um, hmm. It'd be interesting. Maybe. Anyway, like, I'm not too concerned because this I, could I, be like said, episode maybe, seven. You know, yeah, maybe some Klingons do sh- shave their hair for war or very ritual like, and they'll shave their hair at a time of war. And maybe some don't. And this guy could have a completely different hmm. thing. And this fellow's got dreads. It's not just I hair. think. I think. I think it's believable. Like you know, look look at the Tour de France cyclists. You know, they shave their legs before a race and stuff like that. You know, oh, yeah. for that's for air aerodynamics fun. and you know, so yeah, the, they can clean it. the bugs off easier when they finish the race. But well, listen, the Klingons have hair. Everyone. And one thing that I spotted. Uh, look at the face markings yeah. on this bad boy. Yeah, House of Core. Even looks oh, wow. like Khan, you know. But uh, maybe Khan's dad or something. I don't know. I, this this is interesting now because this looks like um, Darth Maul's. Um, yeah. <laughs> there you go. So that oh look, uh, I did I didn't even notice that. Now uh, Tyler is over here. Yeah. yeah and Laurel. So getting He's obviously on a stunned. Knee, it must be. Fight, yeah. Hmm. Boof. So something's going on there, and Lorel's not looking best pleased. <laughs> I think Lorel actually gets zapped. Look. Oh, for sure. Two of them are yeah. stunned for some for some reason. Anyway, and we know like out of any of the houses, House Core would be the one most effed oh, yeah, off yeah. over Lorel's shenanigans in season one. Maybe she'll. Team up with the Juris. Maybe the Juris can be actually good for a while. Oh, the Jur- the House of Juris. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, anyway, number yeah, one. Rebecca now, Ramage- R- Ramage- Doesn't, doesn't she look the part? Yes. Yes, it's, yes, yes, you know yes, what I mean? yes. It's good comparison. No, it's like... And just even, even the, the tiniest little scenes, it's just like watching Anson Mount play Pike. That Even though we're only getting these little flavors after characters um yeah uh, per- perfect casting for number one for sure yeah um the real really love showing discovery getting tin up here yeah and often you know i was actually thinking of that like how dangerous of a move is that because that that deflection just narrowly misses the bridge look at that mm. mental crazy so whoever's driving needs to get a, a bit of a... This time, you know what I mean? That like you can actually see this and you can actually see right into the bridge, which, again, like for outside shots, is 10 times better. Yeah, actually, there you go. It's crisper, it's clearer. Yeah. It's like they have a hood, a heads-up display on the on the view screen like they normally would a tactical mm-hmm. display or something. Um, Obviously, gets knocked around, so we get to see a lot of sparks and flying extras, which is always good. Um, Now, here is an is interesting part. So we have a little bit of a... Worse for wear looking Tilly. And, and she's also wearing, by the looks of things, a medical device on her head. Yeah, just on her temple there, actually. Yeah, yeah, good Cordial spot. Cordial implant or something. Yeah. And then we have uh, Stamets with some sort of, like, uh, Ghostbusters. Oh, Ghostbusters extractor. And something yeah. comes out of Tilly, as you can see here. Hugely. Well, they, they, they suck it out, but it also kind of, like, I'm out of here. But they're actually, oh, they're throwing it into the containment. They're tr- throwing it into the spore. Ah, uh, the spore room. Chamber. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he's actually flinging it in towards the spore chamber. Now, the rumor mill, and I'm 100% on this rumor, that mm-hmm. uh, we saw that green spore fall on Tilly's shoulder. That's so cool. is this part of this green spore storyline, which has been alluded to being the return of our friendly neighborhood doctor? Dr. Culber. And this is what I think they were looking in the mouth of. That sticky thing. Oh, they're cutting it open. No, I don't think they're cutting it open, but I think it's kind of like... Out of it. Mouth of it, yeah. Well, yeah, I did spot something a little bit later on that actually, yeah, that lends credence into it as well. Mm. Um, oh, God, that's interesting. Now, look at the hole here. So there's definitely yeah. growth on the corridors here. It kind of looks like either Moist rust or, or uh, Moss, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Um, doesn't look like Discovery. Um, it's Federation anyway. Yeah, maybe. Kind of. Maybe it's just the lighting. Yeah, it kind of has the same kind of style as Discovery, but just well, these panels down here. Shape, yeah. Different, yeah. Um, red alert anyway. Okay, this was an interesting scene. Yeah. So shirtless Saru. Um, flowers down here. Around. All greenery. You know, is this how they serve uh, Kelpians in the mirror universe? 
Yeah, but like he'd love uh, like stay Stevens Green on a sunny day. <laughs> yeah. time just He's just like a, a student in the sun. Yeah, yeah, Six yeah. Six cans of Dutch gold. <laughs> uh, we're back to the first trailer here where we see or This is like Matt's is cool. I am a hundred, like I said. Yeah, it is, it is, it is. 100% like, this is Sarah yeah, Mitchum. We tried even trying to get response on Twitter with this. I think Linda, one of our admins from the Facebook group, turned around. You know what I mean? We're not. It has to be. I think this is just one of those... Let's give her a day off of makeup. Maybe she had a doctor's note saying, "Look, yeah, you can't uh, you can't wear that makeup today." Yeah. And they went one hundred percent convinced. Yeah, <laughs> no, it is because, like, look at the discrepancies there. That is not, you know, something that doesn't, doesn't look, look like, like Arium. No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, but if they do it, I think it's cool. Why not? Oh, I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I think if we go back to Deep Space Nine episode where they all pay it themselves. Um, can't think of the episode now and it was with Benny uh, the story writer the comic book one and oh like, yeah 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 all the characters were out of their makeup I thought it was absolutely a really great idea you yeah. know what I mean to actually see them without the makeup on yeah makes such a change Um, I'm thinking this Big is the shit. Hayawasa yeah red markings kind mm-hmm. of very similar to the Shinjo yeah um, good, good call actually yeah 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 and we have our three crew. And looking at it there, like that seems whole plate. And that looks as though they're somewhere on the saucer section, let's say scaling down. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Traversing down. You know what I mean? If you look at the, you know the way how to do the the kind of red. So maybe that's part of the circular. Mm-hmm. Um, What's yeah, that say? Medical something. Something medical yeah. in the background there anyway, for sure. But it's some hell of a wreck. It must have been either, either one or it's a big ship or it crashed into something. Yeah. Starting to think, is this kind of like, is there a starbase? Is there a mining facility here? Did I was literally just going to say that that it, it, it looks like it did land on top of a of of a a, a structure in this asteroid yeah, field. I, I'm kind of saying, is this like, like kind of like a, a mining facility or something? Like, what was it there for? As you just seen there with the medical thing, is it there for medical relief? Was it on a, a mission, a, a medical yeah. mission? Yeah, and uh, strange things just start happening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, over now to Vulcan. I assume Vulcan. We're in a a room with Sarah. Ikea. Definitely very uh, Vulcan esque. Ikea. Anyway. <laughs> Ikea. Oh, he's sitting on the old Florgersturg. Where it's only lo- it's it, it's only logical. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> did, did they run out of money on that set? <laughs> 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 it like you know I, I i just i'm just having fun but uh, you know it, it looks like somebody's it looks like a regular <laughs> house listen me. you know I, got the if, if, if any you know, species like, is going to be like you know stern and austere and you know clutter free yeah, look at the yellow curtains why would you want curtains that's such a human thing to say <laughs> I, yeah but anyway, look, it, it's cool. Sars meditating. The Vulcans like to meditate. Yeah. This is this. I want to know what the hell these bleeding things are. They, like we we have our worker bee, and we know that provides the maintenance of the ships. These are just. But see, like the, these are kind of hyper agile craft, which you're probably going to want. We we don't know what the, maybe these are yeah. like, uh, highly erratic, um, asteroids that are unpredictable and needs kind of rapid changes. I don't know, maybe. So but you're there's... basically saying that Starfleet had a ship back in this day that Tom Paris would love. Pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's see an episode of Drive Part Two in Discovery. Um, but interesting to note here, there's four of them, but we only ever see mm. three crew yeah, walking well, around the ship, yeah, so someone right. doesn't make it. Well, I think that's the, the, they did kind of mention as well that there was going to be the red shirt humor going on, and yes. we do actually see. I think it's in the first trailer that there is four and one lucky person is wearing a red security <laughs> yeah so, not so lucky things not needed so to lucky. say four go three come back yeah so and on that note we can see the old threat ganglia popping oh, out yeah. here as well so i think saru is in agreement with you you know yeah red shirts beware um holding hands michael uh with i don't know maybe sarik is that like a red vulcan robe or something i don't know which is, I don't know, really. Could be Amanda's hand or something else as well. Um, here we have Tilly, rifle in hand. 
and some sort of explosion within that asteroid field. Well, then. that's from the first trailer again. Yeah. Discovery goes, oops. Exactly. And you spotted this. So we have two of our yeah. crew outside of their little hyper craft. Um, gold and white, silver. That could be Michael and Pike. I and think it is Michael. We and did Pike. see in the first trailer that uh, Pike's ship got into trouble. Like there was a, a canopy yeah, breach. Sure. Yeah. So something's definitely going on there. And here we have the worker bees. Maybe on this uh, mining rig thing that. Yeah, I think yeah, it has to be. I think there's something there. So I don't think it's a straightforward. I I, I do think it's kind of like. It's I don't know. Complicated, you, like. I yeah, know what the hell I, it's, a, it's a complex of some sort, so it wouldn't surprise me. And like, it'd be kind of cool if it was kind of like um, the lithium mining facility or something like that. Maybe that was kind of like fairly TOS yeah. as well. You know what I mean? I was like, like these look like tracks, like you know, like a like a like yeah. a cart would or you know, roller coaster. <laughs> yeah, Star Trek roller coaster, <laughs> exactly. And we're going to get our own worker bee in the Discovery collection as well, which is going to be cool. Mm. Um, and then back to the 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 okay, eighteen. You know, seems to be a bit lighthearted as well, which is cool. Med Bay. Med Bay as well. And um, back to our away mission that goes south pretty pretty quickly. Um, so Pike and he's a uh, security look, officer. A security officer. Uh, I don't think she's going to make it back. Red shirt. Take a bet. Yeah, red shirt. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Uh, so as you can see by the, by the trailer, as we said, it's quite disjointed as regards to time. That now, as, well. as you mentioned, it looks like they're throwing that uh that thing the green spore whatever into green the spore whatever. chamber yeah you know and, and something goes down connection with tilly yeah and then we have all this know, plasma lightning. yeah look there it is down on the ground and it's kind of like hunched down you can kind of yeah it's gotten bigger some sort of like chrysalis or a cocoon yeah. or something and it's and is this cold we're getting bigger you know no like i was saying off camera like it, it kind of makes sense that like okay we know they can't use the spore technology because a stamus and he's not and they were going to try and help cure him or anything so either one they find something while trying to cure stamus and no there's something wrong cure with silly or else they're still trying to look at ways of using the spore technology because in fairness hmm. it, look I know we can all say we know it doesn't exist in Kirk's time and it's there's no trace of records of it but you know you're not going to just give up on this technology just yet yeah and I know a lot of fans kind of want to see it gone but mm -hmm. I think if you're going to get rid of it like get rid of it like with a good explanation yeah we still haven't clearly kind of found out why you know what I mean they're they're still hunting for tardigrades I'm sure you know maybe maybe yeah. exactly like yeah, another another, another thing that I'm kind of thinking here is that maybe around. they're trying to tunnel in some energy into this room to you know generate the cocoon you know to bring Culber back maybe and you I'm, see no, this well, I'm wondering I think that this cocoon could be a potential replacement for the tardigrade yeah a ripper too hmm um so yeah a lot, lot, lot of uh, hypothesis flying around there uh back to Georgia you know with her little kind of like come Evil and get smirk. some you know come on um that's kind of like take my hand I'll save you <laughs> yeah Take my hand. It looks as though it's Michael as well that she's pointing towards. So. Yeah. Um, I, Let's see. Where, the we, panels and... Look, at, okay. I'm going to show you something here. Right? I don't recognize this corridor at all. Okay. And look at the but look displays. Here. See, see, you have a, a display back here that looks like a... But it doesn't look... Yeah, it looks more like Shinjo. Shinjo. Shinjo but, and then yeah, there's something the else up here as well. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking as well. It does not look like a Discovery tra trailer. Like, the displays just look completely... Yeah. Like, it looks a Federation corridor, but... It's almost like... It's like... Uh, it has, like, the Discovery Ooh. long... Well, hang on. So this is this is Spock coming down on... Stretcher. Spock was off the Enterprise, so it even makes sense that it's not the Enterprise either. Not the Enterprise and ship. not the Discovery. I this could be a medical ship. I don't think. Or... Oh, hang on now a second. Do you see up here yeah. in the top corner? Yeah, it's, that's what it looks more like. Um, it kind of that just looks like the dry section of the discovery, doesn't it? The triangle without the saucer. Hmm. I don't know. I. Just, it just. I've never seen these extra braces here. 
No. Um, on on this side. So, it but yeah, as you as you say, Spock. this is Spock. Spock yeah, on like stretcher it. number three, if memory serves. And uh, yeah, see if we can see, actually, if we, it's unfortunate now with the medics, we can't actually see a com badge because if we could actually clearly make out the com badge, we could be able to tell, see you know, what I mean, if it's exactly. Enterprise or Discovery. But I don't think it's either of those ships. Hmm. Spock has a beard. Oh my god, this was another thing that dropped me mad. Like, why did people go mad about Spock having a beard? Like, <gasps> how can I not like be canon or not canon? Like, yeah. Spock can have a beard. Oh my god, like, like, did his stepbrother had a beard? Did, did people not at Riker in season one of Star Trek The Next Generation didn't have a beard? <laughs> and then he had one. <gasps> on. Shenanigans. So, yes, yeah, season two, January 17th, which is a Thursday. So, we'd probably get it over here on the Friday. And, uh, yeah, so. And I'm actually liking that Spock has a beard because it's kind of like, this is young Spock. You know what I mean? Let's not well, get this mixed this up. Is, this is Spock. This is Spock returning hey. from his mission to find out about these. So, like, he, he was obviously preoccupied with other things rather than, well, you know, a, self-grooming. It's a clever thing to do. Like, you know, I mean, let's not confuse Spock. You, you don't want anyone coming into this and going, is Spock not meant to be on the Enterprise? And if anyone kind of had, oh, he worked on the Enterprise with Pike. You know, mm. oh, hang on, why does Spock have a beard? Oh, this is, all oh, right, this is before the cage. All oh, right, now I'm getting it. Yeah, yeah. If you see what I mean, you know the way sometimes that they were very worried about the Star Trek fans not being able to tell the difference if the two ships looked the same. <laughs> yeah, because we, we wouldn't know, would we? We wouldn't know, no. <laughs> so that's the trailer. So what I'll do is I'm just going to let it play just for the audio side of things here, okay? And um, I'll just stop it just at certain parts of it as well, just for everyone to kind of hear if you haven't seen it elsewhere. Starfleet is a promise. Starfleet is a promise. I give my life for you, you give your life for me. And nobody gets left behind. I can't, I can't. Seven signals appeared across the galaxy. Discovery was determined the source. Now, just to kind of stop it there, you had that very positive vibe coming from um, Pike straight away, which is yep. a complete, you know, departure from season one. So we're, well, you know, no one, one gets left behind. Starfleet is a promise. One thing I'm going to say about the speech is if you watch the cage, mm. um, I think, and I think it ties in really well with Pike in the cage. Um, yeah. He hears his enthusiasm. You hear that he doesn't want to leave anyone behind. Yeah. Um, he believes in Starfleet and then you see him in the cage and he's just kind of like, he has had so much weight on his shoulders with the amount of people he's lost under his command. Mm -hmm. So to me, I think this is very well done with Pike now to Pike to be in the cage. So I wanted it. Like, I think that's very, very good writing. Yeah. Big time. Good call out as well. Mm -hmm. So let's resume the audio here. And then ten of those signals. Spock needs our help. He had a vision. He called it the Red Angel. I've seen this angel too. And I had this unmistakable feeling. As if everything was gonna be alright. I would like to believe in something like that. Something out there. So again, just that part was kind of harking back to Spock's vision that he called the Red Angel and how, you know, Michael's reaction to seeing that. I, I'm just Saru. wondering, did, did the computer, while while she's there with Amanda, did, did the computer just, you know, diagnostic complete and then watch it kind of show this imagery? Um, and if you see her reaction then, yeah, just back there where the Red Angel's showing up, she that's kind of like, oh, hang on here. Yeah, look, look at the display panel there. It's showing everything, and then watch a couple of times. There we go. So either she's she's gotten logs or something like that, and this comes up. So that's the surprise reaction. This is what she's seen. Mm. Yeah, I think it's referring to this part. Yeah, good call, good call. So I I think that's going to be a scene later on, which would make sense. Mm -hmm. So something out there that intervenes before all is lost. Do you like being back in the saddle? It's an invigorating ride. If there's anybody down there, I'm not leaving them to die. We could be walking into a trap. 
So again, it's going back into Pike, you know, saying, if there's anyone down there, I'm not going to leave them behind, regardless of how it looks. So, you know, the mission for the Hiawatha as well. So definitely, you know, super kudos to the cool captain. So let's see what happens here with the Klingons. Something about this isn't adding up. Be careful, Captain. Are you ready to execute this deeply insane plan of yours? This might hurt a bit. <laughs> you are my family. We found ourselves among the stars. So a very touching moment there with Saru and Michael saying that we are family. We found ourselves amongst the stars. Which is going to be great. I, I am I very looking forward to that building up. Like the, this is a fantastically action-based trailer, but you can I'm still see the tie-in for the character development and connection there as well. Yeah, I just, I'm just wondering, is our Klingon friend with the white hair looking for the act of vengeance? Hmm. Rel and Tyler um, would have both led to the destruction of the sarcophagus, uh, sarcophagus ship. I know Tyler had a bit of a breakdown. Lorel was in the room, which he helps them escape. So um, Lorel was in the brig when all that went down, wasn't she? Yeah, but she still kind of helped Tyler escape. Oh yeah, but you know, as as regards to Klingons, after they just knew her to be right. on that ship at that time. So mm-hmm. you know, and you know how the how the House of Korra is like. Kill anyone involved. <laughs> we found our strength. The right men. This feels bad. Discovery could be doing something impossible. Hold tight. Oh my god. And then Spock. As a child, I had the same vision again and again. Now I understand its meaning and where it must lead. So Spock had the same vision as a child again and again, and now he knows what it means. So, mm-hmm. yes, very good trailer. Um, again, yep, I think absolutely. it does exactly what it says in the tin. Uh, it shows the action, the interesting story that's going to be told, but still conveys the character development. And you know, you're bringing in a whole new crew. You know, the the Enterprise, which you know it's going to be difficult to do. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing how the writers and uh production staff pull that off as well as the actors so uh trailer number two pretty much done so yeah i i think the hype hype is definitely engaged here chris oh absolutely look come here it was it was great for anyone that was at new york um brilliant trailer um nice um interesting things to come it does seem as though they are trying to appeal to the old star trek fan which is actually quite good and as i said they're listening so you know instead of having a rant you know mm-hmm. bing be nice about how you put it across. By all means, you know, point out, you know, your your knowledge of Star Trek and where you think yeah. they're going wrong. Point it out. Do it in a nice way. But, like, come here. It could be worse. They might not listen to us at all. And um, we'd still have Klingons with no hair. Um, we'd still have these weird-looking ships. And then, you know, the worst thing that you can hear is, you know, a D7 and stuff like that. And other bits and pieces, you know, Klingon bird of prey. And they just don't add up. But, you yeah. know, it's great that they're listening. Um I like to be honest with you. I just thought Discovery towards the end of season one was getting so much better. Yeah, and you know, I think the storyline at the start wasn't that great. I just it wasn't working, and you know they've done so well with the mirror universe and finishing off that story. I, to me, I think they have everything there for season two. I think it's going to be amazing. Yeah. And, like, you know, let's let's be realistic as well. If we go back to all the other Star Treks, apart from TOS, that's probably the best first season for a Star Trek. True, yeah. And let's call it Spade a Spade, you know what I mean? And it looks to be building upon that. Absolutely, you know. But I know, like, TV has changed this day and age. We have to just accept it. You don't have 24 to 26 episodes in a season that you can actually take a character out and have, let's dedicate an episode to this character and we get to know him. It doesn't work like that anymore. So, you know, that's... So, yeah, it's set course for January age 17th, for everybody. Oh, we'll yeah. We'll see. <laughs> Can't wait. So, um, we'll wrap it up there for that trailer review. So, again, maybe we'll get some stuff. Uh, Chris will be the first to let us know. You're heading over to DST, Destination Star Trek in Birmingham. And, um, yeah, 
So that's going to be awesome. So what are your thoughts mm -hmm. on that? You all prepped? You all ready? You all ready for this? Nah, I'm getting there. Um, I kind of... Mm, one or two bits and pieces I'm waiting for in the post. <laughs> um, I have a few bits and pieces to do. Um, but yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. Um, it'd be nice if there was an announcement this side. Now, there yeah. is, you know, a large presence of the Discovery crew coming over. Yeah. And there's also the Emperor's throne chair is going to be there as well. Mm. I don't even think it was a chair, but... And they reckon that's the only time it's going to ever come over to Europe. And they're, they're actually bringing over props and stuff like that. So, you know what I mean? They're making a big effort for this. Yeah. So, which is great. Which is exactly what a show should be doing. Um, you know what I mean? Maybe, maybe, Chris, we'll hear about uh, short treks coming to Europe. <laughs> maybe announced It'd be a nice announcement. It would be a, a nice, very, very nice announcement. We still don't know that what the situation is and that. And guys, can you just please ask people... Just be very, very careful. When you get a link to a site, please do not put it on a YouTube channel. Please do not put a link down below. Uh, when you're on Facebook pages and stuff like that, like, you know, please do not share these links. Yeah. Okay. Look, if you want to watch it and you're not thing, by all means, go out, watch it. Just don't share how you got it. Yeah. Um, it's very hard when we're all actually working hard together and stuff like that. And we do have respect for this franchise. Yeah. And the last thing we need to be doing is, you know what I mean, getting alerts. And we do work. We do do stuff, you know what I mean? And, like, we do not want to be getting into trouble for a link being put up. Or having to, to be watch, red flagged. You know. Exactly. And we do understand that there is fans upset out there that they haven't seen it. And, you know, look, hopefully, with a little bit of luck, there is a petition going around on Twitter. Sign it. You know. Ask Netflix to show it. Yeah. We'll just have to wait and see. So, you never know. Roll on DST. So, um, yes. yeah, so do find Chris over there if you're heading to Birmingham. And that's on the Say 19th, hello. isn't it? 20th. Yes. 19th. 19th. Yeah, yeah. so that's cool. So, um, yeah, pretty much it there now, folks. So I let us know weeks, in days. the comments below if we missed any Easter eggs. Uh, I'm sure we did, mm -hmm. and I'm interested to read your comments and get into a bit of a conversation with you. Um, anything else on the agenda that you'd like to talk about, Mr. No, 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 no. Um, no, no, no. Looking, looking <laughs> forward to DST and seeing what comes about from that. Excellent. So, folks, as always, thanks for watching. Check out the doobly doo down below for links over to the Trek Collectors channel for uh, other Trek related and uh, general nerdgasm topics over there as well. So, uh, as always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe to both channels, and uh, we'll see you in the next Nerd Escape. So, it's goodbye from me. Slang of all, e and live long and prosper. Spock with a beard. <laughs> That's why I'm keeping this, because I'm feeling very sad. I know, yeah. <laughs> and you too. <laughs> See you, folks. Here's the young Spock. <laughs>